tie ball game. 67. What's at stake? The Midcon Championship. Sean Holtz did a great job of keeping the ball from Green. Kenny Tuck. Who now, Ron, how about this with that basket? 2,000 points and maybe the biggest of his career. He has 20 tonight. Only the seventh time in NBA, excuse me, NCAA history, two players on the same team go over 2,000 points and maybe the biggest shot of the young man's career out of Dallas, Texas. But you could see the defender actually had a hand in the stomach. He was guarding him as closely as you can. And you Inside, see, Green was covered up. Yeah, great job by Sean Hope. So Tuck had to take it one-on-one. -on -one. And there goes Tuck. Guys came in four years ago. Four-year starters, 4,500 points. All right, let's go to the other huddle. And, uh, and tell me what Greg Campy is planning down there. Well, the interesting thing about this team now is they have guys on the floor. They have different people on the floor that can score. Kangas has come up empty the entire second half. The most effective scorer and the guy that I think you want the ball in his hands because he's also a very crafty passer is Severovas. So let's see if he gets him the ball and let's see if Severovas from the forward spot can make a play. And the thing that ORU has to be so careful of is what we've talked about all night long. Oakland is as good a team as has in this tournament of picking up three-point plays on a made two and a foul inside. That's a very good point. And remember, an open three behind the arc can put them ahead, too. So they've got a lot of different options. 31.6 seconds left. Game clock is off. Hey, the amazing thing, Ron, Nelson, who had 21 last night, does not have a basket. Oakland in the second half, 6 of 24 from the field, 0 for 6 from beyond the yard. Three hands, three, seven the clock, three on the way, Kansas, and he missed it. Knocked out of bounds by Oakland. 17.3 seconds left, ORU ball, and they have a two-point lead. Greg Campy gambled. He wanted to go for the three. He, he put all his chips in the middle. Kangas was right on the rim. Just didn't go down. Interesting. 0 for 7 from beyond the arc after an unbelievable first half, shooting 70% for Oakland. Inbounds pass comes to Green. They get it back to Tuck. Double team on him. Then a reach, and it's going to be Adam Liberty who will be fouled. Now he's a 71% foul shooter. You saw the great job they did in the trap by not fouling, but time ran off the clock. It has just now gone to one and one. That's the seventh team foul on Oakland at 11 and a half seconds showing on the clock. Hopes is going to come back into the lineup, obviously for rebounding purposes. The last time that Oral Roberts shot free throws on the miss, the length of this front line was a big factor in getting that offensive rebound. And here comes King. Vili goes out. King comes in. The uh, the high flyer for uh, rebounding purposes or to tip the ball if he has to. Two point lead. Liberty shot in the way. Three point lead. And Ron, if it's a four-point lead, I would take the two points. Drive it up the floor, go to the rim, get the two, take the timeout. Butler and Wright State coming up immediately following our Midcon Championship. Liberty, how big is this? Second one on the way. He got it. Push it quick, get the two. They gotta go quick. Timeout called by Oakland. 10.1 seconds left. It is a two-trip ball game. 71-67. They wasted a second by throwing it in. Now they still have to get it length of the court, but on the sideline. But because Greg Campy called that timeout, the ball was already inbounded. 
Now, what you can do here, because Oral Roberts has 10 fouls, if you have a play that you can throw it up the floor as quickly as possible and score it, you'll save some time rather than using the dribble. Well, there's a sign in the uh, audience there suggesting that they should be a 13 seed. Watch this ball come in bounds right away. They lose a point se a second. Now, 1.4 seconds. You see it's thrown in. Now they call the timeout, so they gained about 20 feet and lose a second and a half. Not necessarily a good trade-off. You say, why does that matter? Well, it does matter. We've seen so many games come down to the final tenths of a second this year. Well, there's no question about that. We have certainly seen that in the Big 12. You see Patsy Sutton and her son, Scott, on the sideline. Sometimes I think <laughs> we don't know that, that moms suffer more and wives moms suffer and more wives. Than, uh, than even the guys do. Hey. Here he comes. This is Jones. Hang is three-pointed on the way. Missed it. The tip inside, Severovas wouldn't go. Tip back out. Oh, Roberts the win. Back to back mid con championship. In the first half, Oakland 70 percent from beyond the three-point arc, and that's what gave them the, the big cushion, the biggest lead of the night. And it is Kangas who tried the last three-pointer. They go 0 for 8 in the second half, and it's a four-point win by Oral Roberts University. Scott Sutton headed over here to the bench. And we're going to see if we can't get Fran up to get a quick conversation with him. If we can't get it on the air live, we'll get it on ESPN News. And here is a look at the go-ahead basket scored by Oral Roberts. The scramble move and Tut. And in this case, he deserves the King Tut label. Ken Tut scores it, his 2,000th career point. How significant is that as well? And let's go to Fran, who's visiting with Scott. Scott, Sutton. describe the pressure of being in a tournament like this after you've played the whole season. Well, you know, it comes down to these three games. It comes down to uh, tonight's game. And a lot of pressure, especially on the home team, uh, especially when you're the favorite. So, uh, give Oakland credit. They, they were terrific tonight, the first half. We couldn't guard them. Our defense was, was pathetic, but they had some big shots. And I thought the second half, our energy level really picked up. Uh, and we were able to get some turnovers, get some stops, and got back in the game. What, you know, you were down at the half. What was the halftime speech? Well, you know, we, we, we spent two hours a day going over a game plan. The guys didn't go out there and execute it. You know, we, we were going to switch on some screens, and we didn't do a very good job. We were going to be a lot more patient on offense. And uh, so we just played a very poorly, uh, poor first half. Uh, the second half came back, and I thought it was great. What, what about your seniors, Kenny Tut, Caleb Green? How much have they meant to this program? Unbelievable. You know, they'll go down as two of the best players to ever play here. And, you know, the first time, I think, in school history to go back-to-back to, back to the dance. And uh, th this is this puts them in elite status. Not that they are, already weren't in there. Congratulations. Great job. Coach, thanks. Back to Ron. Okay, Fran. Scott, congratulations to you. 71-67, our final score. Oh, Roberts wins, and they are in the big dance. This is for the presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now for Fran Frischella and the rest of our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin saying so long from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Let's go back to the studio and Reese Davis. Reese. 
Oh, Ron, the passion of championship weekend is hard to beat. A.J. Graves going to lead Butler in the Horizon Championship on ESPN. Over on ESPN2, North Texas taking on Arkansas State for the Sun Belt title.